Michael, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, and um, Joe, thank you very much for obviously organising and putting this all, all together. And I'm sorry that John's not here to be able to partake in this symposium. Well, Claravain, the new kid on the block. It, it, it's quite an interesting title, isn't it? Really, because we've got one of the old kids on the block actually giving the talk. So um, we'll see where we go. Now, I'm sure you're all well experienced enough that you all know that the ideal treatment to close somebody's great or short saphenous vein would be painless, simple, cheap, and would be permanent, and that all our patients would be delighted. So if any of you know the ideal thing, could you please put your hand up now, and we'll all go home. Now the reality is, there's glue, there's foam, there's other forms of sclerosant, and the reality is these are all potentials that are painless. But we'll go on and talk a little bit more. Now, I'm just going to spend a few minutes talking about the fact that those people who are foam people who very much would say that you could treat everything by putting in a few venflons and foam, there are some good results, but actually, what are the long-term results and how many retreatments do you have? And my very last slide will summarize what I think of all the various techniques. And the reality is if Andrew Bradbury was in the audience here, Andrew would refer to his very large series, which shows some very good results. But it would be fair to say that this is probably not typical of everybody else's exper experience, and maybe it's those people who do a large number actually end up getting very good results. Now, the answer is if one of our other colleagues was here, he would very much be suggesting that you could maybe use a sclerosant with foam and that you should use a balloon and you could actually suggest that this may actually be a, another way of doing it. Now, I, I've put this up there for some like, relief and I'd like you all to read this. This was something I found from Google, but I would suggest you all might just want to read it and then in a minute or two I'll move on. And if the person who wrote it is in the audience, I apologize for putting it up, but if they would like to um, acknowledge that they put that, wrote it, that would be great. And we'd all like to come and learn from them. I'm sure you've all had time enough to read that, and if anybody wants me to show it to them later, I'd be delighted. So what are we all really talking about? Well, the reality is that we know that Venus and laser do actually give you very good results, but the answer is you do have to put in tuminescent anesthesia, and this can be unpleasant and painful during the perioperative period. So what is Clarivane? Well, I'm sure that actually most of you in the audience are well, well aware that it is a mechanical device which delivers a drug which is agitated at the end. And the reality is that by damaging the endothelium, putting in the sclerosant, it is thought that the sclerosant gets to deeper part of the vein wall to make it a more effective sclerosant. Now, Steve Elias, who many of you will know, I can't actually see Steve in, in the audience because I'm sure Steve would want to be controversial about something, but the reality is they produced some of the first, first data, and this is the, the data from their first 30 patients. You can see there the great saphenous vein size they used, their treatment times. There was no tuminescence, no sedation, and overall they had some very good results. The, the reality is at 24 months, in this very small series, there was a 96% closure rate. If we then look at the much larger Dutch study at the Great Saphenous Vein, overall, rather than boring you anymore, you can see that at six months there was a 96% occlusion rate. But it, what I would like to just point out with all, all of these studies, they really were looking at occlusion rates rather than actually what the patient perspective of this was. And if we look at the overall results towards the end of 2012, and uh, you can see that there were over 6,000 cases done worldwide with a greater than 90% occlusion rate. And Eddie Chalner, who's sitting there at the, at the back stroking his chin, had a, a one year had a 92% success rate with respect to occlusion. There's certainly evidence there that the quality of life is improved like any endovenous ablation technique, and there's a low DVT rate. And to date, there have been no nerve injuries or skin injuries reported. I'm sure my colleague, who's going to talk a little bit later, will say a little bit more about this, but really just to flag up that it is as useful in the short saphenous vein distribution as it is in the great saphenous vein distribution, and they have shown some very good results, and I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more about that. 
But I think it is also important to just mention to you all that there is also another new kid on the block. It's something called Safion. It's a glue that is used. Again, very many of the same principles. It's done under ultrasound control and does not require tuminescence, but at the moment is undoubtedly much more expensive. There has been something called the ESCOP trial that has been done in Europe, of which I, Mark Whiteley, and many of the others in this audience have par partaken in, and these results were presented at the American Venus Forum. So if we really want to look at some of the things that we might think are important with respect to the difference between a thermal technique and if we want to call Claravain and glue a sticking technique, there are various things that are obvious. You, you obviously don't have the risk of thermal damage and probably a much lower risk of getting some degree of tissue paresthesia. And the rest is all fairly obvious. There are issues that with the laser and radio frequency, you need to have a generator and are therefore potentially long, bigger costs. But most people, when they are buying laser catheters and radio frequency catheters, actually work a system such that the generator is actually part of the recurring costs of buying, buying the fibers. And the rest is really fairly straight forward. And certainly with both, with both the glue or with Claravain, you do not routinely get perforation of the vein like you may do with laser. So the answer is you should certainly get less bruising. So these are some of the benefits that are suggested. So overall, I would like to suggest that two ticks is good, one tick is good, and a cross is probably not as good, and two cross is not as good as that. The reality is that there's lots of data out there with respect to radio frequency occlusion, and I think everybody would accept that all the results suggest that it is greater than 90% at one year. Similarly with laser, I accept there are one or two studies that may doubt that, and the reality is we're not really sure about foam. If you look at some of the data from those people who do a lot of it, they have very good success rates. But the reality is, and some of the question, quotes we've had back from the stakeholders with respect to NICE are that most people suggest that at one year you may have a 20 to 30% re-intervention rate with the use of foam. The answer is steam has been around for five, six, seven years, and really there is no good one-year data that I am aware of with respect to steam, but I'm hap happily be corrected about that. And the answer is certainly if you look at the fact that um, mechanical chemical ablation has been around for some time now, and looking at the 6,000 patients, there are, is an occlusion rate of over 90%. Certainly with glue, there are probably less than 150 patients in whom they have been, re been reported, and the one-year occlusion rate is sitting around about one year, but I think the evidence, when we still need further evidence with respect to that. So the answer is uh, many of you may know and some of you are participating in that we have got a three-centered randomized control trial being run at Imperial at Charing Cross at Northwick Park and in just about to start in Cambridge comparing radio, radio frequency ablation and the Claravain catheter. And the primary endpoint is actually patient outcomes within the perioperative procedure and we are looking at other secondary endpoints obviously such as, as occlusion and the aim is to do that in just under 170 patients. And this will actually give us some feel as to what the patients think of it, because probably, certainly within the first year, the occlusion rates with both techniques probably will be the same looking at the results that we have there. So at the end of the day, we still don't have probably a 100% ideal technique that we can just get rid of them, because at the end of the day, people do occasionally feel the catheter when you're putting it in and you have to give them some local anesthetic and a wiggle, but we may be a, nearly approaching an ideal. But whether we will actually get to an ideal that is cost effective, I don't know. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Davis. Any questions from the crowd? Okay. Yes, please. Close tributary veins with uh, this device. Can you close tributary veins? Uh, well, the answer is branches, you can uh, certainly do access, uh, accessory, accessory veins, providing you have, it's a bit like laser or radio frequency, providing you have got a straight vein to be able to get the, ca the vein into that. Yes, you can. What's the diameter of the vein? So. 
The answer is long, sorry, as long as you can get the introducing catheter in, the, the straightforward answer is you can do a diameter of three, three millimeters. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, one more question. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Barry Price Guildford. Um, Alan, I just wanted to ask you, um, why did you choose, uh, well, why for the trial was it, uh, did you choose uh, radio frequency ablation versus clarivain as opposed to laser versus uh, clarivain, or indeed um, what's uh, eponymously called surgery versus um, clarivain? Uh, well, we all know that uh, vein stripping is pretty useless, but uh, why don't you choose something like that? The very straightforward answer, Barry, is that in the US market, there has been a sudden shift from using laser to RF. RF Venus is just about to become the main player in the US, and the reality is we were looking to make a, compa a comparison, what is going to be the main player in the US versus Clarivain, and with negotiation with the company, we decided that was the trial to do, and certainly in our unit, we use more Venus than we do laser, but it could as equally have well been a three way trial, I have no, my own personal view is that I don't think there's much difference between 1470 radial laser and Venus, but it was just to have one endothermal technique and keep the sample size down. Thank you very, uh, thank you very much.